ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونستغفره ونتوب اليه ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد النبي الامي وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد الحمد لله وشكر لله we thank allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we glorify his sublime name azza wa jal jalla thanauhu mighty and majestic most high sublime and glorious and we ask him subhanahu wa ta'ala to send blessings and peace and salutations and mercy upon the best of creation our master muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam and his family and folk and followers companions and followers until the end of time alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin the prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam was given jawami al kalim sallallahu alaihi wasallam one of his khasa'is the unique traits that only he was given is universal comprehensive speech in but a few words sallallahu alaihi wasallam and in one of those profound statements that imam muslim relates in his sahih collection rahimahullah ta'ala is that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said al mu'min al qawi khairun wa ahabbu ila allah ta'ala min al mu'min min al mu'min al da'if وفي كل وفي كل خير احرص على ما ينفعك واستعن بالله ولا تعجز وان اصابك شيء فلا تقل لو لو كان كذا لو فعلت كذا كان كذا ولكن قل قدر الله ما وما شاء فعل فان فان لو تفتع عمل الشيطان او كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم that he says peace and blessings be upon him the mu'min al-qawi the strong believer is better and more beloved to Allah than the weak believer wa fi kullin khair but there is good in both there is good in both and the commentators explain that this the quwa that's being referenced al mu'min al qawi the strength that's being referenced here is strength in all dimensions of the human experience it includes physical strength and so it's from the sunnah to take care of our bodies to strengthen ourselves so that we can do more good because an able body is more able to do good it includes mental strengthening mental and this is something that is foundational in our tradition is intellectual strength the tools of learning were foundational in our scholastic history there was a profound emphasis on what are called the tools of learning grammar logic rhetoric and the other sciences that enabled people to think correctly to articulate themselves properly and to articulate themselves in a way that's effective grammar allows for proper speech logic allows for proper thinking valid reasoning and then rhetoric allows for convincing and speaking in a way that reaches the hearts of people and moves people inspires people to do more good it's all from the sunnah the strength includes of course spiritual and moral strength which is foundational and the most important strength it's the ultimate aim of all other strength is em- embodying prophetic virtue strengthening our hearts the spiritual faculty that each of us is given strengthening our moral capacity having the wherewithal to go against the negative tendencies of the ego what's called mujahadatu nafs which is again central to the sunna and so al mu'min al qawi the strong believer is better khairun wa ahabbu ila allah and is more beloved to allah because again all of that strength enables more and more good quantitatively and qualitatively then what then the then the mu'min da'if then the weak believer wa fi kullin khair but of course because of the profound rank and 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 sublime virtue of faith itself iman to actually believe in the oneness of god and in the messenger sent to the people of one's time that this rank means wa fi kullin khair there's of course good in all believers even the worst of believers have a good that is to be respected and honored wa fi kullin khair so the prophet continues sallallahu alaihi wasallam ihris ala ma yanfa'uk in other words seek to strengthen yourself seek to always increase seek quwa be people of fortitude be people of strength 
And this is, if we notice the sunnah, the sunnah employs what our scholars have called both sharia and haqiqah. These terms are used in differently in different contexts. But in this context, when they're juxtaposed, sharia refers to the human experience and the means that we take as human beings in order to live moral lives. Haqiqa refers to the recognition of Allah's oneness and the haqaiq, the, the realities of divinity. In other words, the qada and the qadr, the divine decree and predestination, this is that that consideration is from the vantage of haqiqa, how things really are. Everything that happens in the world is decreed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and He is the only creator. No one can co-create with Allah. He has no share in his act of creating, subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is, as he says in the Qur'an more than once, Khaliqu kulli shay. Khaliqu kulli shay, the creator of every single thing. That's the vantage of haqiqah. But the vantage of sharia is, what work do I need to do at the ta- when the task is before me? In the moment that I am in, how do I use the free will that Allah has given me to best situate myself to employ the means at my disposal so that I can serve Allah, the Creator, and then through that, through that service and devotion, serve fellow man, serve creation at large. That's the vantage of Sharia. And if we see that the Sunnah teaches both, and neither negates the other. And to have only one is a is an invalid view of the world. If we only see the world through the lens of human beings, human actions, human choices, and that's the only lens, that's a, 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 a falling short. That's not recognizing the oneness of Allah. That's not recognizing the qada and the qadr, which is a central pillar of our faith. But if we only see the, if we only engage in the world based on haqiqa, and we use that as an excuse to not take the means, then that's going against the sunnah. Because recognizing that Allah is the decreer of everything does not negate the fact that we have to do the work that is ahead of us. And we see that throughout the read the seerah of the Prophet ﷺ, read the seerah of all prophets, they're always working and working and working. I'qil wa tawakkal. Tie the rope and rely on Allah. Reliance on Allah does not mean let the rope go and then the animal will just wander away. No, tie the rope, take the means at one's disposal. So here in this part of the hadith, Ihris ala mayanfaq. This is an emphasis of that sharia vantage. Be avid. It's not simply take the means. Subhanallah. The sunnah is to be avid, to seek every means of benefit. Wherever we find benefit, the, the mu'min has a right to it and should have a zeal to increase in that. Ihris ala mayanfaq. The ma in Arabic is lil umum. It's general. Anything that's beneficial for us, for our this worldly status situation or the next world. And all of this worldly benefit should be oriented as a means for more in the next world. Ihris ala ma yanfa'uk. Wasta'in billah. This is haqiqa. Subhanallah. Right after that. Wasta'in billah. And seek the help of Allah. Because who's creating the means in reality? And who's creating the effort that we're putting forth in reality? And who's creating the inspiration in the heart to move us to seek those means. And who's creating all of the faculties that allow us to seek any means? Khaliqu kulli shay. La ilaha illallah. It's only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so, taking the means is for the limbs. But the one, recognizing the oneness of Allah is for the heart. And this is how we don't fall into a, 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 a dualism. Because each has its proper place. The vantage of sharia is in our actions. What we choose to do and how we, how we act. The vantage of haqiqa is in the heart, the, the basira, the sight of the heart, the recognition, knowledge, ma'rifa, recognizing that Allah is alone in His decree and Allah is alone, subhanahu wa ta'ala, in His creative act, the, His action of creation. And Allah ta'ala is alone in arranging the world as it is, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our lives are but a creation of Allah. Wallahu khalaqakum wa ma ta'malun. As he himself has revealed, Azza wa Jal, Allah creates you and everything that you do. And so the Prophet Sallallahu teaching us how to find this balance. Ihris ala ma Be avid for everything that's beneficial. And this comes after what? The statement that al-mu'min al-qawi khayrun wa ahabbu ilallahi min al-mu'min al-da'if wa fi kullin khair. Yes, be strong. 
and seek, be avid for the means of strengthening yourself. وَاسْتَعِنْ بِاللَّهِ But rely on Allah the whole time. Seek His help the whole time. Because Allah is the creator of us and our actions. وَلَا تَعْجِزْ Again, going back to Sharia, but don't be weak. In other words, don't let your reliance on Allah make you sit and not act. Don't let it let, let you fall into a type of fatalism or quietism where all you do is, is, is you don't take any initiative and you're just focused only on theological concepts, the, theological principles and realities. No, our theological realities that we believe in, that we affirm, that we have conviction is, that we have conviction in, those theological realities should move us to rise and, and work harder and to take any means that we can find to strengthen ourselves and our communities. This is the sunnah. And then, how does the hadith conclude? How do, what does the Prophet say at the end? But if anything afflicts you, in other words, it's out of your hands, or the results of taking the means, because when we take the means, what's in our hands is just the means, not the effects. Not the consequences, not the outcomes, not the results. وَإِنْ أَصَابَكَ شَيْءٌ If anything afflicts you, فَلَا تُقُلْ لَوْ أَنِّي فَعَلْتُ كَذَا كَانَ كَذَا If only I had done that, it would have been this way. If only I had done something else, it would have been the other way. If only, if only, if only. No. This is where we, look, we open the eye of haqiqa. It was decreed. Our mistakes were decreed. Our slips and errors were decreed. In other words, when we're faced with a task, we try our best to avoid error. But if we end up slipping, if it was a bad decision, if it's something that proved that it wasn't the positive outcome that we had sought, then we recognize the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then we focus on haqiqa. وَإِنَ أَصَابَكَ شَيْءٌ فَلَا تَقُلْ Don't think of your action at that point. We learn from mistakes. It's not a prescription to not learn from one's mistakes. But one cannot get weighed down by mistakes of the past. Again, it should lead to positive action in the moment. And so don't let that weigh you down. Don't say, if only I did this, it would have been this. But rather say, This is haqiqa. Allah had decreed it. And whatever He wills, He does. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because if only, if we get into that negativity of had I only done that, and it does not translate to learning from mistakes for the moment, for the future, it's only a past remorse, that's it. It's only a past whining about the past. If it's, if it's pure negativity about the past with no translation into positivity in the, for the future, then that's one of the tricks of the devil. فَإِنَّ لَوْ تَفْتَحُوا عَمَلَ الشَّيْطَانِ And if only, this word, if only, it opens the workings of the devil. And this word amal, it's as if it's his profession. His profession is to create, is to cause negativity. The job of the shaitan is to fill us with as much negativity through waswasa so that we're not seekers of good. So we're not seekers of, strength, of strengthening ourselves. And so this balance is something that all of us need to be reminded of because the lens of Tawheed should never prevent us from action. And the action that we take should never make us think that we're in charge of consequences. The Prophet ﷺ is teaching us this balance. And this is in Imam Nawawi puts this in the chapter in the Riyadh al-Salihin, he puts this in the chapter on combating the ego. Because at bottom, the most important work that we have is the work on our souls. The most important task that we have, the most important means that we have to take are the means of strengthening our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In other words, the founda- what the, the foundational issue that the hadith is talking about first and foremost is tawbah itself. In other words, how do we go from disobedience to obedience? How do we go from impiety to piety? How do we go from uh, heedless, heedlessness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? That's the ultimate task. All the other benefit in the world should be means to this. Reviving prophetic light and virtue in our own lives and in the lives around us. 
Worldly benefit are not ends. Worldly benefit are means to the end of pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so Imam Nawawi in his scholastic brilliance, rahimahullah, he places this hadith in the chapter of mujahada, struggling against the ego, working against the, the, the faults of the ego and the vices of the heart. This is the ultimate task that we've been charged with. And another hadith that Imam Nawawi places in this chapter, rahimahullah, is what Imam Bukhari relates, the hadith Qudsi, that Allah Ta'ala says, إِذَا تَقَرَّبَ إِلَيَّ عَبْدِي شِبْرًا تَقَرَّبْتُ إِلَيْهِ ذِرَاعًا وَإِذَا تَقَرَّبَ إِلَيْهِ ذِرَاعًا تَقَرَّبْتُ إِلَيْهِ بَاعًا وَإِذَا أَتَانِ يَمْشِي أَتَيْتُهُ هَرْوَلَى Imam Nawawi teaching us what's the point? How are these ahadith connected? When my, Allah Ta'ala says according to this hadith Qudsi that the Prophet relates Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says when my servant draws near to me by shibran, a hand span, I draw near to him by a dhira, a four arms length. And we, when he draws near to me by dhira, a four arms length, I come near to him ba'an, arms outstretched, metaphor, or distances. Metaphors for drawing near to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, which is nearness of the heart, recognition of the heart of Allah's nearness and presence and his ma'iyah subhanahu wa ta'ala his witness to the servant and when he comes to me walking I come to him rushing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves when we turn to him and Allah ta'ala enables us to do more good when we start when we take these baby steps to do good Allah ta'ala opens up more door to good when we take baby steps to get out of evil to get out of wrong to stop our bad habits Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it, facilitates for us to get out of those bad habits. The initial step is always the hardest. The initial few steps are always the hardest. And this is where many of us fall short. We think it's too difficult. How am I going to get out of this bad habit? How am I going to get out of this spiritual fault of mine? It's too hard. It's too difficult. That initial step is, is difficult. Why? Because... The other hadith mentioned in this chapter, Hufatil Nar bil Shahwat, Wahfatil Jannah bil Makarih. The hellfire has been surrounded by appetites and desires, and paradise has been surrounded by things that are disliked to the ego, difficult things. But Al Mu'min Al Qawi, the strong believer, the one that can handle get get past more obstacles, more makarih is certainly more beloved to Allah, better and more beloved than the weak believer. And so, the, but the initial, because stuck in a shahwa, and, what, and getting out of that shahwa is makru, it, yani, to the nafs. It, it's, there's appetite that the nafs is attracted to, and to li- let go of that for the sake of Allah is disliked. But Allah, in His infinite mercy, once we take that first step, we push ourselves with that first step, Allah Ta'ala opens it and makes it easier. It becomes a distant memory. And we've all experienced this at different levels. Various bad habits that we've had, various wrong things that we might have been engaged in, that when we found the strength, the door opened to get out of it, and Allah Ta'ala turned the chapter in our lives with the beautiful tawbah, and then it's like you can hardly remember it. SubhanAllah. There's facilitation. This is why one of the early scholars, Al Muzayyin, says, "Adham ba'd adham, uqubat adham bil awwal, wal hasana tu ba'd al hasana, thawab al hasana til ula." The sin that co- comes after an initial sin is the is the uqubat. It's the punishment for that first sin. But the good deed that comes after a first good deed is the reward itself for that first good deed. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala opens the doors of the direction we choose to to, to follow. And this is why another of our scholars, he was a student of Abu Bakr al-Shibli, Bundar ibn Hussein, rahimahullah, he says, Man haraba min al-dhurub, harabat minhu. Man haraba min al-dhunub, harabat minhu. Whoever flees from sins, sins flee from that person. Whoever rushes away, tries to get out of sins, they run away from sins, the sins run away from them. Why? Because it's all a manifestation of a tawab. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who comes to his servant and relents unto them so that they find in their hearts the strength, this quwa, and they find in themselves this hirs, this zeal, ihris ala ma yanfa'uk, 
and they find in their hearts this isti'ana, I'm going to turn to, oh Allah, help me get out of this. And they find in their hearts this propensity to not have ajiz, wala ta'jiz. They find all of these realities because Allah Ta'ala has manifested Himself to the servant as a tawab Oh my beloved, come back to me. My door is always open. My door is always open. And if you're with me, you'll have joys that you will never have without me. أَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَأَسْتَغْفِرَ اللَّهِ لِي وَلَكُمْ فَاسْتَغْفِرَ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا. One of our scholars defined توبة as ترك التسويف to not procrastinate. توبة repentance is to not procrastinate. And the Prophet taught us صلى الله عليه وسلم نعمة تاني مغبون فيهما كثير من الناس. There are two blessings that many 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 people are cheated out of. In other words, they're so valuable. But the person doesn't invest them for value. They let, it, they let it fall to the wayside without actually using it to get an investment back. And what are these two blessings? As-sihatu wal faragh Good health and free time. Good health and free time. And if we're in the company of people who lack one of these, we'll start to appreciate how great these blessings are. Some of the Salaf would visit hospitals daily just to see the states of people who are ill so they can recognize the blessing of as sihatu wal faragh And so to not turn to Allah when we're well, to not go back to Allah when we have that strength, when we have all of these blessings showering upon us day in and day out, to not go back to Allah, to not take Allah seriously, this is ghabn. This is to lose out on these blessings, to not invest them proper, properly. A proper investment, if you own a big real estate land, that's the most precious land in the, in the, in the town. And if you just let it fall to the wasteland and you don't build anything on it and you don't sell it for value and then you end up selling it for one-tenth of the price, you got cheated. Only a, 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 a foolish person would do that. And so the Prophet ﷺ is teaching us, if you have blessings, sihatu wal faragh No, this is the time for tawbah. Ibrahim ibn, uh, ibn Adham, one of the early scholars, he used to say, Allahumma kulli min dhulli ma'asiyatik ila izzi ta'atik. Oh Allah, take me out of the abasement and humiliation of disobedience to the might, honor, and triumph of obedience. And we'll conclude with a, an aphorism of Imam al-Junaid, rahimahullah. Someone once asked him, كيف السبيل إلى التحقيق? What is the way to becoming realized in the sunnah? What is the way to becoming realized in the sunnah? The first thing he says, be tawbatin to zeel al-israr. By a sincere repentance that does away with persisting in sin. Finally getting out of those bad habits and that disobedience that's, that, that might be persistent in one's life. And the second thing he says, wa khawfin taqta'u taswif or yaqta'u taswif and a fear of God that makes one stop procrastinating. And a fear of God that makes one stop procrastinating. And hope and optimism in Allah such that the person starts seeking good deeds in their lives. They get up and start doing good instead of wasting time and wasting their lives. And being uh, treating the ego as something negative by recognizing, putting the ego down by recognizing that the lifespan might end any day. This could be my last day on earth. And to not think that I have perpetual life. And then the person said, well, The person said, well, how can you accomplish all those things? These are lofty, high matters. How does one get that? And what does he say, Rahimahullah, Imam Junaid? He says, By a heart that is singularized containing only the pure oneness of Allah in it, the recognition of Allah's oneness. A heart that is singularized in purpose, oriented purely to the oneness of Allah and His majesty. A heart that's filled with the remembrance of Allah and recognizing that He is one, subhanahu wa ta'ala, filled with the love of Allah, 
filled with the desire for Allah, filled with longing for Allah, filled with a relationship with Allah. We ask Allah Ta'ala to make us realize in these meanings. We ask Allah Ta'ala to grant us the tawfiq, the success in implementing and operationalizing the sunnah in our lives step by step, step by step, improving every day, improving every week, improving every month, improving every year, always seeking increase for our worldly benefit and our other other worldly benefit and that Allah Ta'ala grant us the tawfiq to become strong believers and pillars for ourselves and our families and our friends and companions in the community and the entire creation. Allahumma inna nasarukal afwa la afya al mu'afa tamma fi dunya wal akhira. Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allahumma salli wa sallim mubarak ala sayyiduna Muhammad al-Nabi al-Nami wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa aqimu salam.